So now in this video I decided to test out what voltage the uh, reset pin on the 555 timer kicks in. So I'm using an NE555 timer there. Power supply is set to 5 volts. You can see the line, it's a uh, trim pot set to 5 volts. A um, little bit below the 5 volt line. And when I lower this you can see the output is high because of the red LED. Maybe I'll zoom back there. And um, soon as the LED turns blue, that means that the output is low, the way I wired this up. I do it in a lot of circuits. And there you can see, we got to get down to, it looks like probably about 0.7 volts. And uh, so there's there's a middle ground region there. That may be picking up stray signals. Um, but in any case, looks like uh, you pretty much have to go to ground to uh, turn this off. And uh, at least with this particular one, let's raise the voltage to 12 volts. So you're going to see that go off the screen, but that doesn't matter. And uh, so we got it set to 12 volts. And of course, current went up, so I used a 1000 ohm resistor to protect uh, both of the LEDs. And uh, now we're going to lower it. So it's 12. Now it's, uh, what is it? I think that's 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And it still hasn't gotten. So it looks like it's probably about a diode drop more than ground right there that you have to deal with down to ground. So you really have to, at least for this particular uh, 555 timer, this uh, went dark because it's on a battery. Um, but in uh, any case, looks like with this particular 555 timer, you can pretty much count on actually going to ground at the reset in order to reset it and set the output low and hold it there. And now we'll get a closer look at the circuit. So I'm using an NE555 timer. The uh, reset voltage might be a little different for different ones. I don't know. But in case, positive supply to pin 8, negative supply uh, to pin 1. That's pretty standard. I have 5 volts right now. Uh, the trigger pin, you've seen a lot of circuits. We're not using it in this. We could prevent it from doing anything by tying it low. Um, but we're not going to worry about that. So with uh, pin 2 held low. So that's less than one third supply voltage. That's the voltage it works with. Um, tying it low means it wants to keep the output high at all times, which means we have the positive supply coming, although you lose uh, probably about a volt right there. But you can see that goes to long lead the anode. Short lead the cathode heads to ground. The red LED is lit up while the output is high. So since we have pin two, a uh, trigger pin uh, held low, it wants to keep the output high at all times, as we said before. But we have the reset pin, which overpowers uh, pin uh, two up there. So we have uh, that jumper there, bring in the positive supply to one side of the resistive element. And then this jumper there, bring in the uh, negative side of the supply to that side of the resistive element. We got five volts across that because I set the power supply back to five volts. This is a uh, wiper where the arrow is pointing. It connects to that resistive element. So now it's somewhere around two and a half volts, uh, two, one, whatever. And now we have a low enough voltage, probably less than 0.7 volts from the look of the oscilloscope. Um, but in any case, now the output is low. So this is more powerful. That always wants to hold the output high, but reset pin always uh, overpowers the trigger pin. Something to remember. And uh, so now the output is low. So you can think of positive 1000 ohm resistor again, a long lead anode to short lead cathode right there, headed to the output. And that does connect to ground pretty well. So in any case, most of that is just that basic 555 timer uh, stuff. I thought I would review it for those uh, not used to it. I got a lot more detailed videos. Uh, so look for those if you want those. Thanks for watching.